to hit your chats. Oh, I had the wrong microphone on. Hold on. It's a good start. Um, hey, welcome to History Chats. Um, today, um, we're talking about a bunch of stuff, as you can tell by the title um, here. Um, this is all a bunch of other things that I came across. This is this is a, a program that I've been trying to figure out how to do for a while, and decided, hey, let's just let's just do it. Um, some of the stuff that you see here is going to be incredibly relevant uh, to the story we're about to embark upon. Um, most of it, I'm probably not going to get to, and that's okay. Um, this is one of those things that, for a brief time in the year 1920, a lot of different things emerge to create this moment in which ultimately we're going to have to contend with the, the changing nature of uh, public spaces and how we use them um, and, and who uses them and, and what all that is for. And hey, we'll, eventually we're going to have a baseball game, which is one of the most unusual things. But I, let's start with simple, right? A lot of other interesting threads. Let's try to, I'll try to make it as, as straightforward here for everybody. Um, and we'll start with this building. Um, this is the county courthouse. Well, it's the fourth one, depending on how you want to uh, define these sort of things. Um, this was built in 1892, um, and it was basically used until it was replaced by our current courthouse in 1954. Um, this replaced the older courthouse, which is technically the third building used as a courthouse, although I would argue that this is maybe the first courthouse building built as a courthouse for Marathon County, but this is, this is the building. Um, even back in the 1860s, I, I should say like, you know, the earlier, we don't exactly have a very clear record of what buildings were used for the first and second. Um, they were probably used as a courthouse. They weren't built for that purpose. So they were just kind of repurposed. And then some of them stick around. It's not really the important part here. What's important is that even in the 1860s here, um, and this is obviously, little, this is probably from the early 1890s, late 1880s, this picture here. Um, it's not just a building to do government work. Um, it's not just a, you know, community space. It, it is also, it, it is a community space, right? Um, you've got the, um, you know, Cutler Post statue here uh, as a memorial to the, the soldiers of the Civil War. Uh, we got this fountain. Like, this is not just a municipal building uh, where we have courts and, you know, the government papers are filed. Like, there's a lot more, um, especially to the, the county seat here in Wausau. Um, this is a building that is, you know, the grounds of the courthouse are itself uh, a very interesting um, sort of thing. So you can see here the, the Cutler Post statue. Um, but this, the thing that we want to focus in on is, of course, the band stand. Um, this is, as the name implies, a stand uh, that was where the band would play. Uh, but it wasn't just a music thing. They would certainly have concerts here. And this was sort of the main thing where the folks in Wassa would go to hear uh, live music. Uh, this was built in 1881 um, on the grounds of the courthouse square. Um, at a time when we were really just getting started into, the 1880s were like a, a period of, growth for the music scene here. We had, uh, you know, by the end of 1882, um, three or four really good uh, sort of cornet band, brass bands, uh, there are choirs, there's a lot of stuff here, right? But it's also a period of growth for the community other ways. Like the bandstand was a bandstand, but it was also a place where people would give political speeches. If you had like a traveling preacher coming through, they would, you know, uh, get up here and address the crowd. Like there's a lot of reasons that the bandstand becomes an important fixture of the community uh, for the for um, these early years. Um, and you can kind of see here, um, so not all of the, the Sanborn maps actually have it. Um, it is basically the same structure, though. Um, I'm, I'm a little un, unsure here. Uh, so on the left here, you can see the, the arbor um, is what it's labeled, the courthouse here. There's also a couple other buildings that they used to have, like the sheriff's uh, department and a jail. Um, there was also at one point like a, a barn. I think, I don't know if this, that's what this is. I think this might be the barn uh, where the, um, well, here, let me pointer, laser pen. We can see that. Um, there was like the volunteer fire department was out of this. Uh, by the time that we get to the turn of the century though, those buildings have been moved um, as we need more space and the uh, beautiful uh, granite uh, stone building that is the courthouse is built, but the, but the bandstand remains, right? And this is the corner of, um, you know, Scott, 3rd, 4th Streets. Um, this is the modern 400 block, um, which is what we know today. Um, the bandstand is the same. I, I don't understand 
it looks like they might have flipped it at one point. Um, as an exterior structure, they don't necessarily the, our, the the surveyors don't necessarily spend as much time making sure that it's exact, but you know it's there. So the bandstand is very much present. Um, okay, um, during this period, it's it's not always in great shape though, as you can see here. You know the bottom, but has has seen some better days. Um, every once, every couple of years, the the county um, has to allocate money to to put a new coat of paint and do some repairs. Um, and and certainly there are people who are are maybe not as much of a fan, right? Um, for example, um, in the research for this this program, I came across the story of Annette McRae. and that's a really interesting person here. Um, she, uh, Mr. McRae, uh, was a, a leading. Uh, Landscape gardener, I think is the term. Garden landscaper, uh, guard, landscape gardener, I think is what they would call him. Um, he had a business. He died very suddenly, uh, very young, and left um, his his widow Annette here uh, to take over the business um, and support her, her her two daughters. I think um, it's not terribly important. She had some children, uh, but she ends up becoming very successful. Uh, she is made the uh, at least until she was. Uh, let go for political reasons, which I don't know if that just means she's a woman. Um, she was like the official gardener, landscaper for the uh, uh, Chicago's uh, Lincoln Park uh, sort of area. Um, after that, she goes and becomes the head landscape gardener for four different railroad companies. And she travels around the Midwest, including coming here uh, to Wassa, because um, I'm not sure which one she, I think the St. Chicago, St. Paul, and wait, Milwaukee, Chicago, and St. Paul. One of, one of the two. Um, she comes here to do that. And while she's here, um, she has some thoughts about the bandstand. Specifically, um, so this is an article from 1906 when she came. Uh, she, she gave a little talk for the um, uh, Civic Improvement Society, which apparently we had at that point. Um, I know I'm going to be throwing a lot of uh, newspaper clippings up here. I'll try to read the important bits for you. I know it's probably not the most readable. Um, but yeah, so... She says, uh, among the things she advocated for the, the beautification, how we could beautify the city of Wausau in 1906, uh, she says that among the things she advocated uh, was the removal of the bandstand from the courthouse square to some other place. She was also of, of the opinion that the popcorn stand on the corner of 3rd and Scott Streets does not improve the looks of anything in particular in that locality. So she has some ideas. Now, this is really interesting, right? Uh, one of the reasons that she does not like this and that people are, especially in this, these early years, this becomes a problem to have a bandstand. Um, and the peanut, the, 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 the popcorn stand is kind of an interesting thing. I've, I've looked at this, um, this picture uh, postcard a bunch of times uh, you know, over the years. Never once registered that that was a popcorn stand. But yep, there it is, the yellow little structure here. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that gets left. People litter the, you know, the, the, the peanut shells, the stuff it, it, as people go to concerts, you know, they're going to mill around. Like this all leads to a situation where like, it's going to be hard to keep this looking nice. Um, and if that's the goal to beautify the city, let's, let's take a look at that. Um, it's also sometimes is in pretty rough shape, right? Um, and this leads in 1911, um, the, the property committee of the, uh, Board of Supervisors for the county, um, they put a sign on it that says for sale. This doesn't go over very well. Um, for a lot of the same reasons, um, well, here, um, this is this is a response uh, from a WASA pilot. Uh, in response to this, a, a number of the um, residents and, and merchants of the area uh, sign a, a, a petition to the county board um, saying, Quote, the petitioners, residents, and taxpayers of Marathon County do respectfully request that you defer action on the resolution passed by the county board requiring the removal of the bandstand on the courthouse square until the next meeting of the board with the view of said res having the said resolution reconsidered. Because of its location, we believe the courthouse square should be for the use of the general public and would respectfully request that the people be given for use of same unrestricted by keep off the grass signs or other prohibitory regulations. The committee, we learn, um, and this is 
with, with the actual thing. Um, the committee, uh, we learned, offered the building for sale for this reason. Every time a band concert is held on the square, the lawn is littered with popcorn bags, peanut shells, etc. The grass is trampled down and the shrubbery injured. There is really no other convenient place on the east side for giving concerts. Okay. That's not to say that people don't try to figure out a better situation. So over the course of the next week, um, and I'll just point out if, if you're really paying attention here, uh, the WASA pilot was a weekly, so that's why this is on the June 6th, and then we're going to go and on the 3rd, it's going to jump around. The Daily Herald was, was, was daily. Um, anyway, um, this particular issue of the Daily Herald, we have two. This is one of them. Um, uh, on behalf of the Ladies Literary Club, specifically the uh, apparently, the, the she was the chairman of the Department of the Study and Philanthropy Division, or department. Um, Margaret Trevitt, Dr. Trevitt, um, she gave an official suggestion that maybe the city should, or the county should move it to the YMCA. Um, there's this patch of land, which is now Yawkey Park. Uh, it was a lot bigger back then. Um, it wasn't really a park at that point, but it would be a good place, right? It's not too far out of town, um, you know, whatever. That doesn't end up working out, but it's a nice idea, and we're talking about it, right? Um, I also love this one. Um, this was just underneath it, talking about the same thing. And I'll just read this out, because I think it also gives an interesting perspective here, too. Uh, Turn the courthouse lawn into a loafing place? No, not yet. The writer prefers to look at the green grass and growing shrubbery instead of certain parts of the anatomy of a bunch of young fellows who usually congregate on the square whenever the bars are let out making insulting remarks to later passers-by and keeping off otherwise respectable people. Let's keep it a beauty spot. Why seek to litter it up with waste paper, cigarette stubs, empty candy boxes, and the aforementioned gentleman? Don't make it an eyesore. Don't make an eyesore out of one decent spot in the business section. Keep the bandstand if you will, but by all means, retain the beauty of the lawn, even if you have to do it with the policeman's club and keep off the grass signs. Um, so, yeah, maybe, maybe the, you know, what they're really arguing with is not necessarily that the bandstand is inappropriate, but the logistical concerns around this. Um, and so I think, I think ultimately the, the, the groups are, are open to the idea of moving it. But again, is there a better spot? Um, at one of the concerts um, the following week, uh, there was some discussion, and they at that point decided that probably uh, Washington School Grounds would be it, right? Washington School, it's a public place. They say if the stand is to be moved, this would be as good a place as can be found. Um, except the school doesn't really want it for a variety of reasons. Um, one more idea gets thrown out by the end of the year, um, and they kind of have a temp an idea here. Uh, what about City Hall? Uh, we're building a new City Hall. There's going to be a park around it. This is the, the City Hall that's at the end of 3rd Street, uh, not the current City Hall. Um, kind of near where the post office is back there today. Anyway, um, the proposed City Hall Park, which is going to be around it, wouldn't that be a great place? Well, and, and the answer is like, yeah, but they're not finished with the city hall or the park. We won't be until next summer. So what they decide to do is just kind of leave it where it is for now, and then we can move it or maybe rebuild it. Um, but that all kind of struggles. As we get to 1912, it just, as with a lot of local governmental decisions, eh, it's just easier to let it be and we'll just not spend as much money. Um, they did try to create a fund and they actually got an architect to draw up designs for a new um, you know, bandstand that would be better suited to match the, the decor of that new brick building that we have, right, the brick court, uh, granite courthouse. Um, it, it's just too expensive. And so they just decide to, you know, let's, co let's, let's just patch it up. Um, you can kind of tell here, um, this is a postcard, so there's artistic liberties in terms of the color, uh, but that we no longer have that sort of um, staggered pattern. Um, they just kind of enclosed the bottom of the stand. So we know this is after 19, uh, 12, 19, 13. So in the meantime, all right, well, the public really likes it here. We'll just try to do a better job of making it look nice and keeping the grass nice and, you know, good and all of that. Maybe encourage people to pick up after themselves a little bit. Um, it's a lot of work, but as time goes on, you know, throughout the 19 teens, um, the, the parks departments get formed, well, eventually in 1920, but, um, you know, there's a lot more effort where, where the, 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 the 
administrative structure that is the city and county governments um, include a lot more public works and things like that. So, okay, maybe we can figure out how to make this work. Well, until March 15th, 1920, when again, you know, the, we've been kicking that can down the road and now it's come, you know, we've got to deal with it, right? Um, there's a wind, uh, high winds and that destroyed some of the roof on the bandstand. Um, and the county property committee decided, uh, is likely, as they say here, um, that they want to just remove it. It's not worth repairing. It's, it's not a great shape. We can't just put a couple coats of paint on it like we used to do. Um, it's at this point too old. We need something different. Let's just get rid of it. They're not saying that we don't replace it here. And in fact, that's what we decide to go forward with. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's the old one can't be. So we get to work to replace it, right? Um, and that's what the idea, again, there's not, I don't see any real discussion about like, should it go to the YMCA anymore? Um, it's probably going to stay here. There's not a lot of other good opportunities on the east side uh, for these sort of events, which are very popular. Um, but how do we pay for it? Well, here's an interesting idea. Um, this is at the city council meeting uh, for the Wassa City Council. Um, they suggest a baseball game. So, so here's, here's what they say. Uh, Ad Alderman Ludke. Um, called attention to the fact that the present grandstand or bandstand at the courthouse park is getting to be an eyesore and that it is re it that its repair is almost impossible in its present location it also encourages encourages the parking of automobile on automobiles on 3rd street during band concerts almost blocking that thoroughfare uh, Ludke uh, recommended that the present stand be torn down and that a new stand be erected on the southeast corner, so not the northwest, but the opposite side, the southeast uh, of the park. To secure the necessary funds, he recommended a, band, a baseball game between the city and county officers and uh, be held, um, and the city clerk was instructed to issue the necessary challenge. Alderman Gatesman, um, as the chairman of the county board, um, accepted the challenge and uh, promised to organize a county team that will uphold the dignity of the county. So they're, they're going to figure that out. Basically, we're going to have a baseball game. Uh, in order to get in, your ticket money is going to go towards a fund that we're going to set up to replace the bandstand. Um, and uh, it's a fun idea, right? Hey, let's, let's get the county and city, get them involved. Uh, they get a chance to play some baseball. The community gets to have this kind of fun, unique event. Um, they get to work signing players uh, and having practices and um, all of that. A week after that, or about two weeks after the initial challenge is made, um, there's a meeting of the Chamber of Commerce. And the Chamber of Commerce, well, they make some suggestions. And... As part of that, um, and I think it is the Chamber of Commerce that pushes us in this direction, but let, let's just look here. So George Borowitz, uh, who ends up becoming, uh, 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 since some accounts, um, the original account doesn't give him credit for making the challenge, but it seems to have been his idea, and he is going to be the manager of the Wassa uh, city team. Uh, but he gave a little, little uh, explanation uh, to the Chamber of Commerce um, about the baseball game, which is to come off between the city and county officials, the proceeds to go towards a building of a bandstand and a restroom and a comfort station on the county square in place of the bandstand now on those grounds, which is about tumbling to pieces. Oh, hey, that's different. That, hmm, well, that's not in the discussion until this point. At some point in, over the course of that last week, um, the plans have gotten a little bit more grander. Um, and you can kind of guess what a restroom is, right? It's a bathroom, right? What is a comfort station? Because that's not a term that we use very frequently these days. Well, it's actually kind of interesting, right? Um, I don't really have a picture of it. Because it is essentially another word for... It, it's, it's, it's not exactly a public bathroom, but it is basically a public bathroom. Um, for some reason, people don't really go into public bathrooms and take pictures. That's usually frowned upon. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures that would represent this, but um, we can talk about where it comes from. Um, actually, very interesting. In 1919, the year before, um, there was a law passed in Wisconsin that in, imposed, um, ba basically said that every city and village in Wisconsin must provide a public comfort station. Um, and a comfort station, again, this is a place to, it, it's in the idea of, of public health and, and cleanliness. Um, this is allowed, allows people uh, the chance to 
um, you know, wash their hands. Um, they don't talk about it, but ultimately they're also talking about how, um, you know, they don't use the terminology, but it's kind of understood that we're also talking about like relieving yourself of your bodily wastes, right? Using the bathroom. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, and this is, this is sort of in that progressive idea of like, hey, the government ought to make, uh, you know, opportunities for the betterment of a community. And this is, this is a great opportunity for that. Um, it's also something that was pro, uh, pushed through in the, on the state level by socialists. And I just want to take a quick derivation here and talk about the politics. Um, during World War I, the Socialist Party of Marathon County has been crazy successful. Um, hard to overstate. And there's a lot of reasons for this I'm not going to get into. Uh, maybe we'll talk about the socialists as a whole. Um, I know Gary did a program about Herman Marth a while ago. I did a blog post years ago about him on our website. But um, Herman Marth up here, uh, the socialist chef, he ushers in this, this big change. In 1917, he's elected the second uh, district assemblyman for the, for the region. Um, and all of these guys are going to be running. This is in 1918. Um, I also scanned it kind of wonkily. I don't know why I left it like this, but that's what I did. Um, all of these guys run in 1918 and all of them get elected. Um, the socialists don't do well up to this point. Why are they doing well? Well, it has a lot to do with the fact that they're the only party in Wisconsin uh, or, or, you know, that, or, or the country that says we shouldn't be in the war, uh, World War I. Um, and the German-American community in Marathon County is very unhappy with how they're being treated uh, by the powers that be. And so they do what they have been doing for years, which is they vote for the guys that aren't trying to do that. Um, and that means the socialists. And the socialists are going to be very successful, but they're going to struggle after 1920. Uh, the war is over, the protests kind of go away. Um, they don't actually really find a lot of opportunity to really deliver on the platforms they promised, uh, partially because uh, the rest of the political establishment is trying like hell to keep them from being power um, in power. So, you, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. You also have like the Soviet Union come into being, um, you know, you know, there's a communist country. And even though socialist isn't communist, there's just a general red scare of that sort of political wing. Um, and so ultimately, everything kind of falls apart. And instead, in the, in the stepping into the, the vacuum um, is the, uh, the Republican Party, particularly the, 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 the La Follette wing, the, the progressives, right? The Democrats lose a lot of the left-wing support to the socialists and the nonpartisan league and those sort of groups. Um, and then after the war in 1920, and this is just an interesting thing because as we get into 1920, the Republicans are going to be dominant as the main political figure from this point well into the 1930s, arguably even beyond the 1930s, right? There are parts of uh, Marathon County in which um, the real election from 1920 on is not in the actual election day, it's the primary for the Republican Party. Which, is it going to be a stalwart conservative, or is it going to be a progressive sort of La Follette in, on, the left, on, the, on the other side of things? Um, but in general, um, this is the WASA pilot, uh, which is the Democrat-leaning candidate. The Democrats also have some issues with, like, how do we do prohibition and things like that? So, eh. But the important thing here is um, they are happy the socialists are gone. So um, they're not happy the Republicans sweep, and they do. The Republicans sweep most of Wisconsin. Basically, every, every election that they're up for, they win. Um, the Wassa Daily Record Herald, however, as the Republican paper, is a little less subtle about their successes here. As you can see, um, well, they indulge a little bit with some, some cartoon elephants dancing on the front cover. Um, you don't see this very often from uh, the paper, but they were very relieved that the Wilson administration will not continue. The Democrats are out of the, the, at the national level, um, and also that um, they're doing very well. The Republicans are doing very well in Marathon County and Wisconsin. Um, this is interesting, though, right? How, what does this have to do? Well, the socialists and the the, the Republican, um, the, the the progressive Republicans, are the ones that are pushing through this idea of the comfort station. And as we get into actually implementing it, this is from the Chamber of Commerce is making a statement here um, about why we should we should go ahead and do this. Um, they point out an interesting thing here too. With the passing of prohibition, with the removal of alcohol, we're going to see some real big changes in the landscape of how people live their lives. The saloon, which is the fixture of most Wisconsin communities, 
that's probably not going to do very well when you can't serve alcohol. And so with that in mind, they're arguing that the comfort station, this public bathroom, is going to be an important place. And there's grandiose things here. But you know, the question of the public comfort station, well, here, I'll just, just read here. Uh, with, with the saloon, uh, for with the saloon will go a measure of public accommodation that provided for thousands, which should have been provided years ago as a matter of municipal duty. Um, the question of the public comfort station has become as important, as pressing, as that of public sewers, public health, and other features of public comfort and sanitation. We venture to say that this, there is not a city in the United States as adequately provided with public comfort stations as it should be. And there are many cities like Wassa with practically no provision at all in this direction. Now is the time to take when this matter should be taken up by every association, board of health, city council, etc. Uh, it is a reproach to our often boasted advancement and enterprise that thus far we have left a necessity so urgent and essential to the initiative of a business we have voted out of existence. So the, so the saloon, which is this, the center point for a lot of communities, the comfort station is going to be one of the ways, uh, if it is just for a chance for a place for people to use the bathroom, right? And this is even more important and gets latched onto uh, because the women of the county who are, you know, this is, this is the era of the, you know, not quite the flappers yet, um, whether or not that applies here, but the women in Marathon County, are, you know, they're not the women that their, you know, grandparents were or their parents were. These, these are women who are out in the community. That separate sphere, well, it's expanded. You know, they voted in 1919 and 1920, right? And so they make this suggestion here that, um, hey, yeah, it would be really, really nice if, say, you, you note here on, on the right side here, it says, uh, the res basically there's a petition signed by groups of women across the county, um, including, they point out, the Women's Club of the Town of Harrison, uh, the Business and Professional Women's Club of Wassa, the Dancy Women's Club, uh, the Athens Women's Club, and there's more that are going to be added to that list all over the county. Why? Well, imagine you got this nice, shiny new automobile, um, and you're going to go to town for the day, maybe to do some business, do some shopping, maybe to visit some friends. This is not like it used to be. You can come for the day and leave. And it would be really much, it would be a relief if there was a place that these women in particular could know that they could, you know, wash their hands, use the bathroom, like, that's an understandable thing. There were not women's bathrooms at the county courthouse, or pretty much anywhere in Wassa. I, that, I don't know that for, sh for sure by 1920, but I would be surprised if there was too many women's bathrooms. There also wasn't too many men's bathrooms. They just were bathrooms. But now that women are in the public, we're starting to accommodate how that landscape is going to look, um, and so we're going to need some bathrooms and some places like that. Um, what's really interesting here, though, is, you know, with all the dancing elephants, um, the coverage of the actual election here, um, it doesn't really talk about how women were, this is the first presidential election that women are voting in. They note that they voted, but we don't really know the impact. Um, the women of, of, of the United States don't just create a, you know, a suffrage party. Uh, now they have the right to vote. That doesn't become like the women's party of the United States. Because the women uh, of the United States that want the vote, that now have the vote, there's a very broad coalition that accomplishes that, right? Uh, they don't always want the same thing. And so what ends up happening instead, you know, even though they don't talk about it here, because it's not very obvious, um, there's not a bunch of women that are running for president or, or governmental positions. Um, there will be a couple that come through over the next few years, but not that many. Um, so they don't really know how to talk about it yet. But it's interesting, this is the day after the election. The Daily Herald also has an extensive column here on another event, which just so happens to be very, very relevant. Um, this is a, uh, a demonstration, a short course put on by the UW Extension, um, uh, headed by Mary Brady, who is going to very soon formally organize the Homemakers Clubs, which are going to be a center point of a lot of society uh, for women in Marathon County. And um, this, this little short course, a couple hours here, um, they have um, Lillian, Lillian, I think? Her name is uh, Miss, Mrs. Hooper, who is the, the, the from Oshkosh, uh, who is the head of the newly formed League of Women Voters in Wisconsin. Um, she gives a, a, the keynote. 
and they had some demonstrations. Um, eventually, Mary Brady was supposed to herself give a little demonstration on cold pack canning, but unfortunately, the other present presenters went very long. So uh, she, as, the, as the thing says, uh, she took the entire morning. So she just passed out the instructions to the women um, and canceled her part of the program. But before leaving, all the women present signed a petition presented at the next regular meeting of the county board asking for the furnishing of a woman's restroom just as soon as could be possible. Which is really interesting, right? Um, how do women use this new vote that they have? It's not to create a woman's party, right? It's not to put a bunch of women up for major offices. It's to just be good governance. And, and uh, I think this is maybe the first organized attempt of the women of Marathon County to influence public property. And it's it's to have a very necessary thing of, it'd be nice to have a public bathroom we can use, restroom, a comfort station. And so it makes sense then that this gets kind of lumped in. If we're already going to make some renovations of the county courthouse grounds, why don't we include some sort of version of this, right? So what about that baseball game, right? I know I'm, I'm now at a half an hour. This is going to be a little bit longer. I, it, a little longer than a normal one, but but now we're at the baseball game. Let's talk about the baseball game. Um, in particular, um, they, they everybody is excited about this. And now that we've added the extra expense of the plumbing and all the stuff that's going to have to go into a comfort station, you know, let's make it successful. Um, they set the, uh, at Recreation Park, Athletic Park, right? Um, and it's set for July 18th, 1920. Um, you're probably wondering, hey, Who's on the team? Maybe you want to want to cheer for them. What are the names of the people that you might want to cheer for? Sorry, I just kind of want to throw that in there. Um, if, you're, if you're curious, you can pause. These are the the players uh, for the Marathon County team and the City of Wausau team. There's some there's some 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 talented people in here. Um, I can't remember who specifically, but I know there's at least one of these uh, government employees uh, actually pitched in the minor leagues or or in in like or not pitched, but like played some some quasi-serious ball in the minors. Um, so uh, a bit of a ringer there. Um, ultimately, the game goes ahead, um, and it's really close. Um, it is very close. Um, they actually tie at the end of the ninth inning. They go for a tenth, um, and the county squeaks out two more runs and takes it over the city. Um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a pretty good game. I'll just point out, just because it's very uh, an interesting thing here, um, uh, Mr. Mark Bellis uh, oversaw the thing, and he gave some, some, some explanations, uh, a little speech, um, and I just think it's fun. He says, uh, uh, as for these players, most of them are members of the county board and city council. I must ask that you remain quiet during the game, because as officials, they are not used to applause. However, if there are any aggravated taxpayers in the grandstands who desire to throw pop bottles at them, they have my permission. So, in interesting, interesting take there. I don't know if anybody took them up on that. Um, it also led to some very humorous uh, instances like this. This is the report from the county board proceedings um, at the November meeting, uh, where they give a little update about the situation and, hey, we won. Um, and and they, they, I just think this is funny. There's a, a resolution that was put forward by uh, Supervisor Kiefer um, with regards to one of their um, good players, uh, George Erickson, who's from the town of Red Mountain at the time they were calling it Fleet. Uh, so basically they say... Um, uh, among the players drafted is George Erickson, a member of the town board. Uh, whereas the said George Erickson uh, was injured and incapacitated from work through his thumb coming into contact with a hard baseball, willfully and maliciously thrown by a fellow player, and through no fault on the part of the said George Erickson. And whereas the said George Erickson, in addition to the pain suffered through said injury, was financially injured through the failure of Mrs. Erickson to do the milking, therefore... Be it resolved that there is hereby appropriated to the said George Erickson from any funds in the county treasury the sum of 23 cents, and that same be placed on the tax roll of 1999, provided that said George Erickson shall be alive and still kicking at that time. Um, I don't know if this passed. Uh, I will say uh, George Erickson died, I think, in 1996, so he was three years away from getting that sweet 23 cents set aside for him. Um, you, again, you don't you usually see this sort of uh, kind of fun uh, get into the official government reports, uh, which is, you know, kind of, I think, a, a fun break for everybody. Unfortunately, the game didn't make as much money as they needed. Um, this is a report from the city council the following year in January, um, where they said uh, they made $170.07. 
um, which is not bad. Um, it makes up about maybe a third of the overall fund that they end up creating. It's about $500. Um, but hey, it's a good start. And so they make a report. Um, they say, uh, hey, let's issue a challenge. Let's, let's have a rematch. All right, how about this here? We'll put it up again. Um, and apparently the county board agreed. Um, that same week, the county itself, uh, county board actually had their meeting. And um, they're a little less excited. Um, the agreement was made that essentially the county and the city would split the cost. But what the cost actually is, is a little up on the ground. One thing I will note here is they've stopped talking about the bandstand. Um, this, it does not say the bandstand anywhere in here. It's a comfort station and restroom at the courthouse park. Um, same thing here, comfort station and restroom. The bandstand is no longer being discussed. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, the restroom and comfort station is already going to be very expensive. Um, they, they estimated that the cost was going to be about $15,000, which if you adjust for inflation in 2023 uh, would be um, about a quarter of a million. Um, so that's a lot of money. Um, and so they're, they're kind of figuring this out. And then they start to think about it over the course of 1921. They're like, well, you know what? We're already kind of having to consider doing something with the, the main building itself. The courthouse is not big enough for the governmental work that we need to do. So instead of building this sort of separate comfort station, why don't we just kind of rethink and we'll roll that into the larger issue um, of, of the remodeling. Um, and so consequently, it just kind of never happens. Um, the, the, the enthusiasm for the comfort station model kind of dies out by the end of the 1920s. Um, it's more, more appropriate like public parks. And we ended up building one in Marathon Park in 1921 anyway. So maybe there we go. But what about the money we raised, right? We raised a bunch of money with that baseball game. Where did that happen to that? Well, funny thing about that. They kind of forgot about it. They put it in a fund and they said, we'll keep adding to it and eventually replace the bandstand and we'll build the, um, but they, they kind of just didn't. So another uh, 15 years go by uh, and then they go, hey, this money exists. Um, it had been put into the, the care of the park uh, commission, uh, the county park commission. Um, and at the time, C.C. Yaki was in charge, and he was like, hey, we should probably disband the fund and split the money up. Like, we're not, at this point, needing a bandstand. We don't need a comfort station. Um, so let's just take this money. It was about $500, uh, $541.10. So he split it between the city and the county, um, and um, that's what happened with that. Um, the bandstand itself lasted a little bit longer, as they did in the past. Uh, they couldn't come up with a good solution right away, so they just kind of left it as is. They did some minor repairs, but the following year in 1922, um, enough was enough, and they tore it down. Uh, they brought in some workers from the poor farm, or the asylum here, um, and uh, they just they just tore it down. Um, and you might wonder, like, hey, what happened? Did, did, didn't the public want this to be a thing? Well. Here's an interesting thing. Um, this is a, uh, we haven't talked about the people that actually use the bandstand and whether they like the location. Yes, it's very convenient for people coming out, but I mean, this is, um, this is from Barney Schultz, uh, BF Schultz, who's the leader of the, the main band in town, the 128th Infantry Band. Um, apparently there was some criticism of a concert that they played, um, and so he felt the need to respond. He, he responds to these sort of things in the public paper. Anyway, um, he kind of gives an account of like, this is what we actually played. This is all good stuff. And he also says that, hey, um, you might start the hat uh, for the purpose of building a bandstand so the band could have some place to play so it could be heard and not on 3rd Street corner either, but away from the noise. Um, also hire a policeman to keep the children and, from running and hollering around the band as half the time the musicians cannot hear themselves play on account of all the racket. Um, I really believe it would be a great improvement and for the good of all who love music. Well, so, so you know, the thing is, we had kind of figured out um, parking. You know, there was a point in, like, 1920 where uh, they were concerned about how everybody would drive their cars up and create, like, this in impenetrable ring of cars um, so that people that were enjoying the concert had to stay until the end and people left. And, like, hey, could we kind of stop? Like, okay, eventually... Uh, whenever there's an event downtown, it stops. Uh, people aren't, like, stopping traffic coming through. 
But automobiles are a lot louder than horse and buggies or people walking, and it becomes a little bit more problematic to have. I will say, uh, one of the bandstands that is put up in the 1920s that kind of, uh, you know, is a little bit further out of the field um, is today on Grand Avenue on, at Hammond Park. Um, and I have played concerts as a musician in that bandstand. And I will say, it's not ideal. Um, the sound of the cars running by uh, just kind of don't make for the best, most relaxing, relaxing, relaxing experience. Um, so yeah, instead, um, in 1924, um, as part of the sort of second wave of renovation and buildings that were built at the Marathon Park, which is now Marathon Park, um, we build the uh, beautiful um, and iconic uh, exhibition building but they also build this bandstand, which is the same bandstand that was still there today, and you can still hear concerts during the summer there. Um, it's been renovated, of course, but I won't go down that rabbit hole. Um, as for the location, um, one of the reasons that they tore it down was, was not just it was, you know, we have a better spot, but again, we need the, the location. Um, they never built on the, the southeast corner like they were going to, uh, but they did have plans for the northwest corner, and that is the World War I mo monument. Um, so there's a memorial monument that was put up there, um, and that was was takes the place. Um, and it, and it, you know, I wouldn't say that it like wasn't a nice gathering place. I, I think that they still tried to make it kind of look nice and and feel um, like a like a place you go and relax and and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe a little less uh, central to the to the public experience of going to hear music, um, but that is kind of how things evolve. So. I think I like this story for a bunch of reasons, right? Um, on one hand, and I, I think this is, yeah. Um, you know what, let's go back to seeing the bandstand. There we go. Um, as I said, there's a lot of threads here, and I didn't pull at all of them, um, but there are certainly other ways that you could go. You could talk about politics. You could talk about sort of uh, the nature of women getting involved in the community, right, with the, with the survey or with the, the petitions, um, the changing roles of women and the public landscape of, hey, maybe we should have some women's bathrooms. Like, that's, that's part of the story, too. Um, it's about the nature of music. Like, this bandstand, even if um, they hadn't, uh, they had replaced it and just repaired it, it's not big enough for the sort of band that Barney Schultz was running in 1922. So it's probably not suitable anyway. There's a lot of really interesting things tied up in here. Uh, you know, politics... Uh, society, all of these things. And it really is, I think, shows in a lot of, in an interesting way, uh, sets the stage for the 1920s. And the 1920s is a time of, of a lot of concern about political changes, right? The socialists are gone, the Republicans are in charge, but what are they actually doing? Um, and all of that sort of stuff about societal changes, the saloons are disappearing because prohibition, what does that mean? Um, a lot of this is kind of setting the stage for the uncertainty and the change and the turmoil and, and, and the roaringness uh, of the 1920s that's to come. So, um, yeah, and as I said, it's a story that I've been kind of thinking of, of doing for a while uh, now, and I figured it's as good a time as any to get into that. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, I will say also that we're going to continue the story here. Um, next week, Gary Gisselman will be back um, talking about another 1920s sort of change. Um, we've been kind of sticking to the landscape, uh, you know, the stuff that's on the ground. Um, we're going to look up next next week uh, to look at the aviation that comes to Marathon County um, in the 1920s. So um, more history chats next week. Um, come on back for that. Um, I haven't done this for a while. I'm going late. Well, you know, I've already gone over the half an hour. I'm just going to check to see. Does anybody have any, any, is anybody commenting or quit? Probably not. But, um, yeah. Nope. That's all right. Um, thanks for watching. And, um, like I said, Gary will be back next week with some more, um, uh, uh history chats. Um, and, uh, in the meantime, you know, have a, have a wonderful rest of your day and, um, you know, with the, if you're watching this live or nearby, uh, stay safe. I guess we're going to get some snow. Uh, winter is here. It's a weird way to end this. Have a rest, good rest of your day. We'll see you next week for some more history chats.